Section 444, this is Jonathan Gardner. Of, I'm covering uh, Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. This is, this is a fun chapter. We're going to calculate forces without even looking at electric fields. So it's, it's really awesome that we get to do this. We just think about the work and stuff like that. Anyway, the, the problem is this, is, is like suppose that we have um, a dielectric and it, suppose we had a conductor and we had a charge. The conductor produces a negative charge on the surface that's opposite of the charge that's near it and there's an attraction going on there, which we calculated before. Suppose we did this with dielectrics. Well, it's not quite as easy, is it? Um, calculating the exact polarization due to the inside the dielectric is not a trivial problem. And so you end up with hoping and wishing there's a better way to do all this. And there is. There's a, there's a much easier way to do this. Um, let's consider a uh, parallel plate capacitor. Do, 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 do. And we're going to have a dielectric that we're going to insert into there, a slab of dielectric stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see how good my picture is. Okay, so we have a distance D here. That's D. We have a distance A here. And we have a total distance W here. And then this slab is inserted a distance S. Okay. And what we're going to do is rather than think about uh, the electric fields and all that kind of stuff. There, there actually is, if you, if you really get down and think about it, there's this fringing field that has to go from the positive charges up here, up and around, and down to the negative charges at the bottom there. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So over here, there is like this weird uh, field that's pointing at it at an angle that can interact with charges that are on this thing and cause it to move in or out, right? But we're not going to think about that fringing field. We are instead going to think about if we pulled, so we exerted some force, and we moved this, this thing a tiny distance ds, okay? Not accelerating it, we're just moving it. So we don't want to have the, the, the work that we do uh, in, end up in kinetic energy. So the amount of work that we had to do is basically the amount of force we had to push just to move it a tiny distance. Now, um, the force that this thing exerts is going to be negative that, and so we get the, the negative of the force, or the force Let's do this. The force is equal to negative dW by the dS. Okay. So that's so we're just going to take the derivative of the work with respect to distance, and that will give us the force without even talking about electric fields. Okay. How much energy is stored inside of a capacitor? Well, you don't even have to think. You can write that down. Um, what's the capacitance? Well, the capacitance is going to be equal to epsilon naught. Um, we're going to take the area over D, but this is kind of weird. So the area has to be split up into the parts that are uh, consumed by vacuum, um, plus the parts that are not in the vacuum. This is divided by D. Okay, so uh, if we had a capacitor that was pure vacuum, it would be epsilon naught a w over d, but we don't, so we have to include this component for how far this thing is inserted. It's going to change the capacitance of the configuration. Okay. Now, as we slide this thing in and out, we could either hold the potential constant, uh, add or subtract charge as appropriate, or we could hold the charge constant. The problem with holding the, char the, the potential constant is what you're actually doing in order to do that is you have to have a battery hooked up. And as you move that, this is this bar of dielectric, the, there's going to be current flowing through that battery to maintain a, cons a consistent uh, potential. And we don't want to calculate the amount of work caused by the current flowing, so it's, it's easier just to hold the, the charge constant. And so we'll use this equation instead. Work is equal to 1 half Q squared over C. And we're going to hold the charge constant and we're going to see how the energy changes as the capacitance changes as S changes. Okay, So the force is equal to minus dW over dS. Let's use basic, uh, basic uh, substitute in here for W. So let's, let's take the derivative of W. So Q doesn't change. C does change. So we take one half. There's a negative C due to that guy. So we cancel out the negative sign. And now we have a C squared. Now let's take the derivative of C. So dc by ds, well what's c? It's uh, this stuff 
This one doesn't change. That one does by s. So we're just going to get epsilon naught a chi e over d. And I skipped something. I feel like I've skipped something important. dc by ds. Yes. Okay. This q squared over c squared, what is that? Well, that is the potential. Is it? No, hold on a second. Q squared over C squared, one half, epsilon naught chi A over D, V squared. That must be, yes. So it's one half, epsilon naught A chi E over D times Q squared over C squared is the potential V squared. That's right, V equals Q over C. That's just V squared, okay? So that's the amount of force that occurs um, that's the amount of force that it's actually sucking it inside uh, in proportion to these these numbers. It's kind of interesting that it's not it doesn't vary based on s. So if s is just a tiny bit in, you'll get the same amount of force as f is almost all the way in. So that's kind of interesting. Now, if you, let's suppose you did it the wrong way. So you said, I'm going to take this formula, and we are going to calculate the force using that one. So we have the force is equal to minus dw by ds. So that's a one half. Uh, the capacitor changes, the potential changes. Um, so v squared. Hold on a second. No, v squared. The potential doesn't change; it's constant. V squared. We have the negative sign here, and dc by ds. Well, dc by ds is just epsilon naught a chi e over d. Okay, and you're like, well, wait a minute, hold on a second. Something's wrong here. This is the exact opposite of what it should be. And so you're like, whoa, what happened here? Well, actually what happened is the change in work was equal to the force that we applied to move it a distance ds plus the work the battery did to keep the charge constant, okay? And so we can calculate VDQ. Uh, VDQ um, by ds, so VDQ by ds is equal to well, Q varies. How does Q vary? Where's Q? Q is... Wait, hold on a second here. V, Q, is, Q is V over C. That's right, so let's change this equal to... Um, uh, Q is V over C, that's C, V squared over C. So it's D by DS of V squared over C. So we take the v squared out because that's held constant. Then 1 over c, um, no, dc by ds, v squared c, q, yeah, q equals vc. q is vc, this is v squared c. So v squared uh, times the derivative of that, which is epsilon naught a chi e over d. So this is the work the battery did to... Um, to maintain the consistent potential. And this is equal to two units of that. So when you take this guy, subtract that, what are you left with? The positive force you're supposed to have in the beginning. Um, so uh, this is um, one of those problems where you can approach it from two different directions. One is correct, the other is also correct, but you have to make sure that you know what you're talking about the whole way through. So you have to think carefully uh, every step of the way. Hope you had fun. I sure did. Take care. Bye.